Hello. Right, I got around to doing my video on uh, how I fish the float ledger. I'm sure everybody does it different ways. Everyone has makes their own way of doing things and it works for them. I did the video on how I make a trace. I've done a video on how I make the rig, basically. This is how I fish it. It's quite long-winded. Well, it's not that long, I don't think. At the end of it, there's a couple of better fish, a couple of 20-pounders I had. One of them was very, very memorable for me. Uh, and the, the third big fish was an absolute monster, one of the biggest fish I've ever seen. It was caught by a friend of mine, very good pike angler, Wyndham Cool, uh, who gave me a lesson that day of why, why to float fish at range on a large water. And, uh, yeah worth watching anyway if you like it feel free to like or comment and uh hope you enjoy it cheers morning uh i thought i'd do the a quick video on how i float fish float ledger uh a couple of people asked me i tied the rig in the other video it's it, it's very very simple basically uh i'll come to a still water to start this i'll get the rod in in a minute uh show you the rig with the float how I fish it out there, how I set it up. Uh, then I'll talk about why I would use a float ledger over a, a normal running ledger. Right, get the rod in and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Right, this is the rig basically. <coughs> right, I love these floats. I call them ET nod floats. They're fixed at the bottom. I personally don't like any floats that are fixed at the top because they're fixed at the bottom like this, you can change them. If you're fishing a river with a big flow, uh, put a bigger float on it, hold more lead. Also, these sit in the water. As you tighten it up, they'll sit. And you'll see that sticking out. A pike breathes on that, it'll start moving, it'll start twitching. Uh, if you have an inline float, I don't think you get as much sensitivity. Because when you tighten up to the indicator, you can make the float sit on the surface. Quite often, it'll lay flat like that. That's an indication sometimes you get the tiniest little rings coming coming away from it right this is the the fluorocarbon up trace i tried the other day that'll be linked in the other video i've just got a one ounce bomb on there and i've got a, a sea fishing clip they don't open up trace attached uh, i did a video on how to make the traces quite straightforward and i have a smelt I've tied it on with bait elastic. You don't need to do this, but it saves you quite a lot of money. So that's it really. It's not rocket science. I set the float about a foot over depth. Uh, I've got a, a power gum stop knot there. I'm only fishing, when I'm fish float fishing, I, I don't use it for range fishing. I use, the way I'm fishing today, I've got four rods. I think that the fish are gonna be in quite close. So. I've got two on floats in close in the margins, probably three rod lengths out, two rod lengths out. And then I've got two other rods just on running ledges and I've got them out there at about sort of 40 yards. But that is it. I mean, that rig, I use that on the rivers. I'll show you how I do the rivers with it later because it's slightly different. The only difference really when I'm fishing this on a river, I don't bother with a backbiter, which I've got down there. Anyway. I'm going to cast this out. Right, that's fishy now. Right, I'll go through the setup a little bit. As you can see, I've got another rod over there. That's a <coughs> day blind bait baster. Probably the best heavy duty pike rod ever made. Fantastic rod for launching the bigger baits out there. Uh, this rod is a very, it looks identical, but it's actually a day blind uh, P1, which is a two and a three quarter pound Tesco rod. Uh, probably the best all-round pike rod ever made by a long way fantastic rod i use it on rivers uh, i've got a shimano 
uh, XTE 10,000. These are like, these rods and those reels are pretty old. Those reels have been serviced like two or three times. I'm loaded up with a 50 pound Power Pro braid. The back biter I've got on there is actually Predator products. That's quite new. The one I've got on that one is a, a rad indicator. Now, these uh, rad indicators are fantastic. They're quite expensive if you do a lot of pike fishing. If you do a lot of pike fishing, they're worth it. Now, this one, I reckon the person who had one of those rads, I, well, <coughs> the person who made the rads, or the person who made the Predator ones, had a rad. There's a few things that aren't perfect, whereas that is a perfect backbiter. It's got a counterbalance at the back. So you can, fishing a standard running lead, the, the other one's fine, but this one you need a little bit more finesse in the counterbalance, stops the float dragging under. Also, if you're fishing uh, some rigs, like sunken float rigs can be quite critical. So yeah, they're, 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 they're worth getting, they really are. I think they're in. Just make sure you get the rod rest in the right side size. <laughs> Otherwise you buy them, they actually the rod rest goes into them rather than clip on. The indicator I'm using there is just a Delkim. I bought that when they came out, the TXIs. I don't know how long ago that was, a long, long time ago. I bought a set of those because they had the remote. I'm still using them now. No plans to upgrade them. And out there, hopefully, you can see my float. It's just sticking out the water. I'll try and demonstrate. In fact, I don't think there's any point because I don't think you're going to see it. And I haven't got a camera that can zoom in on that. But for me float fishing is the most it's the best way to see a take and also fishing like this if there's fish cruising around in the margins that line is off the bottom i have actually in this very swim i've actually seen a pike bite me off before i've even got to the rod where they swim through at the back end of the year not quite there yet but they swim through the back end of the year and they take the line now that sounds like a bit of a tall story but it, it happened to me. I have actually landed a 29 pound pike for a friend of mine, Alan Stagg. I actually netted it for him. We thought it was 30 pounds and he hadn't had a 30 at the time, only to realize his bait was not, the line was going into the net and coming out. The fish had just swum through, got caught up. Uh, well, that's a testament to Gardner Brave, that is, because I can't know how he landed that without biting it off. The only saving grace really is it wasn't the 30, otherwise he'd been mortified. But one reason to use a float keeps the line off the bar for me i just like seeing the floats go oh yeah another reason i like using a float is when you get a take you can see where the fish is going uh, and if it's going towards a snag you strike pretty damn quickly whereas sometimes if it's going the other way you've got a bit more time on your hands you just get a bit more knowledge all right i'm going to go and have a look at the other rod Hopefully you can see the float there. Interestingly, this one looks like it's dropped back in that. Also, it'd help if I put a bail arm over. <laughs> All set for a take now. Quite surprised I haven't actually had one. This uh, was a once great water, it's not now, but it's usually good for a take or two. Shit, like the one I've just had. Well, just had our first take then, I was looking at the other rod and uh, I had a lamprey out about 40 yards and that's just gone, but it's dropped it. But I just got a feeling there's fish moving around the margins today. Uh, in fact, I'm sure. And that could well have been a fish moving through and like exactly what I'm saying about fishing a float. It could have been a line bite. Usually I find if it pulls out like that, if a pike generally, there's no resistance on that, they usually don't drop it. So I'm thinking that could have been a line bite. Anyway, I'm going to have a cup of coffee. Right, <clears throat> this is my second float ledger rig on the other side. I'm doing something slightly different with this one. I'm using a, a trout. Exactly the same rig. The only difference is the trace. Now, I'm experimenting with this. It's got a Cheb weight in it. 
which creates a hinge. You can actually change the top trace so it creates it so it can actually it's got a lot more movement in that. Now for this water it would make no difference at all but some of the waters I fish are a lot harder. Little things like little edges like that can make the difference. I'm no car bang though but it doesn't do any harm it doesn't put the fish off so I'm just going to pop this trout up. I've got some like uh, foam in there. I've got a feeling it might need two pieces. And there's a lot of weed in the margins here. And this will sit above that, hopefully. Right, I had a take on the other rod. I've sat there and I've had a look at it. It was on the float. It's only in about three foot of water. But there's nothing there now. Uh, I think there's fish moving around the margins. I'm just going to replace this uh, lamprey at range with one of the floats that goes. bait went earlier <coughs> and it's definitely been picked up by a fish you can see the marks under the treble there I don't think they're feeding today but they're about put this back out there right <coughs> why would I float fish now today's a good day actually for it i've had a couple of pull outs on the ledger baits one definite take on a float but i think there's a uh, small fish moving around the margins a lot of times people get pull outs i think that's where fish actually go through the line i think when pike take the bait they take the bait anyway floats in the margin i've got a feeling there's fish in shallower water now, the reasons i float fish <coughs> now on a reservoir, I just think they're better for covering on a big wash or gravel pit or anything. I just think the float's in the margin. It's much easier to control it. It's easy. And I also like looking floats, looking at a float. It's as simple as that. There's no better, the best takes when you see that float lay flat or bob and go. And uh, the ones I fish at range, I do fish out on a, on a running ledger. That said, uh, I learned an interesting lesson many years ago. I was on a, a quite a famous water in Somerset. And uh, we sort of, me and a very well-known angler called Wyndham Cool, who's had some absolutely huge fish. In fact, he might have had the English record. Did a trade on some tickets. So I did two days with him and uh, he did two days with me. Now, his two days were the better days, but they weren't so great. We did, I think we caught a couple of fish. On my days, we were fishing from the bank on the first day. Now, I wouldn't dream of fishing like, at that time, I wouldn't have dreamt of putting a float out at range we're talking sort of 80 yards something like that we were fishing quite a well-known swim and there's massive undercurrents there i put my baits out into the hot spots uh all day my indicators were bleeping i was getting four ounce leads dragging windham on the other hand he's a very very experienced pike angler i've never seen anybody he used a bait boat and he put his baits out there probably about 90 yards you could see his float but he had a really really good indication on the back in fact he had the rad indicators and i bought them the next day after i saw that i saw him get i saw i heard his indicator go twice that day this is a float 80 yards he wasn't getting affected by the undertow at all i think he was using a one and a half ounce lead the first time i had his float go it was 34 pounds the second time his float went uh, that's the second time i heard it bleep i think it was 28 pounds but there you go I, I ever since then i've 
I find with a bait boat that floats really good. It doesn't tangle, it's easy. You know where your bait is. Other people know where your bait is, so you don't have any problems. I learned something that day. You always learn a lot from fishing with uh, other anglers. The more different anglers you can fish with, the more you can pick up. Yes. Right, fishing's a bit slow today, but I think I've sort of tried to explain that the float ledger uh, debate, not rocket science, that one. Well, I've just been reading this magazine, Catch Goal. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I always have a banner at the end of my video. Uh, Martin, he prints, it's a friend of mine, and I'm lucky enough to print the magazine for it. I do like quite a lot of printing for the trade, so I'm quite blessed in that front. I'm actually, I'm able to take this copy with me fishing and reading it, because I keep hold of a few overs. But, it is an absolutely fantastic magazine. I personally think it's the best fishing magazine that's ever been written. I mean, some of the articles, it's not just about, it, it, it has Predator articles in there, but some of the best articles on, I've just read one about a skate. These people are fishing kayak, from a kayak for skate. That chap's just had his rod, 50 pound rod broken twice. I mean, it's mind blowing stuff. I mean, some of the best articles I've ever written about pike fishing have been in there. Brian Ingram's story when his jack went off. I mean, Dave Horton, this one's, is, I mean, I've only read the two articles. I have to pace myself, otherwise I just do the lot in the night and the missus don't speak to me for a week. But uh, yes, for the money, I mean, it, it, they're going up in value now, these as well. I'm after issues one and two. If anybody knows where I can purchase that, anybody's got a copy for sale, I'll pay good money for that. I'm watching, some, watching them on eBay and they're going for like 30 odd quid each. Uh, now they have a complete set. But you can't buy this magazine off the shelf. You have to actually subscribe to it or uh, get it on the internet. Well, well worth the money and try and keep away from the internet if you can. Cause it doesn't do you any good watching, getting onto fishing forums, I know. Anyway, fingers crossed we'll get a pike in a minute. Uh, in a second, we're going to go to the rivers and have a, a brief look. I did quite well on the rivers this year. Well, I love fishing rivers. Uh, I love fishing, all sorts of fishing, really. But, but I think every year I have a different favourite. When I was younger, I used to love lock mask and places like that. And I still do. Uh, but as you get older, rivers are nice. I think the key is to try and keep it, to try and mix it up and do different things you can get very stale if you fish I know some people who spend all their time on the same river catching repeats which I'm a bit guilty of this year but I didn't have a choice in the matter right <coughs> when I'm down the river this is a little river quite near home my setup's pretty similar to what it is on a lake but I don't have a back biter on the back I just have the rod pointed up in the air keep the line off the flow going straight to my ET float over there it's not doing a great deal at the moment the most important thing is when I'm on the river I haven't got a backbiter I have to have line of sight with those floats I'm watching those floats all the time uh, very rarely I'm usually on the rod uh, bail arm off because I've been on a bait runner before the indicator even makes an alarm those floats are set so as soon as the pikes it's near that they start twitching long before they go off and uh, it's worked for me for as long as I can remember and I don't know why pike when you're using the bait runner I have it on the lightest setting I can they don't seem to be phased by it on the rivers on still waters they can be a bit more a bit more nervous I know on chew I've actually on some of the trout waters I've just seen drop baits with the slightest resistance on the rivers like this they don't get so much pressure there's not a huge fish in here and uh, this seems to work twenty pound pike what a beauty yep yeah, I'm happy with that I don't think we're going to catch anything today and uh, the seasons I'm a bit piked out this year it's been a bit of a, a funny year I've never had so much time to go fishing but 
on the bucks, the waters I wanted to fish. I like fishing for PBs. I haven't been able to get near this year because of the travel location. So I've fished locally, which has been good fun. And it also meant I could catch a few old friends. Uh, actually, I don't know if you saw my other videos, I was aiming to get 120s this year. I actually got my 120 uh, half past nine in the morning on New Year's Day. I'm absolutely made up with that fish. The last two years have been a bit, a bit slow. I've been fishing for bigger fish. But uh, that, that was a river fish, beautiful fish. Caught a float ledged bait. <coughs> I'll show you a, a picture of that and you can have a look at it. And uh, yeah, that made my season. But now we're, we're coming to the end of the season now and uh, I'm a bit piked out. There's no point pike fishing in the summer. Uh, I do a bit of fly fishing in the spring. I really enjoy that, tying my own flies. Uh, just trying to do different things. Nowadays, I'm looking forward to bass fishing more than anything. I'll be doing quite a few videos on the bass front. Uh, once we're allowed to take the boat out and hopefully that's my goal for this year I'd love to catch a double figured bass on a lure but uh, just catch some decent fish on top water lures off the coast would be really nice something sort of seven pounds I'll be made up with that uh, next year the pike fishing is going to be I'm quite excited about next year I'm going to fish completely different venues I've had pike out of pretty much every type of venue locks reservoirs but I've never had a pike out of a drain so that's one of the boxes I'm going to try and tick next year Thanks for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it. I was ma well made up for that bike on uh, the morning on New Year's Day. Uh, fingers crossed it bodes well for the rest of the year. Uh, pike season for me is pretty much ended now. I still do a bit of fly fishing. I love tying my own flies. and uh, In fact, I like tying them flies as much as I do fishing them. It's a very challenging but incredibly rewarding way of catching pike. And there is potential to catch some. I've been fortunate to catch some big pike in the past. And maybe in a week or two's time, I'll catch another one if I'm lucky. Fingers crossed. But uh, the main thing on my mind now is bass. Uh, the Great Bass Race 2021 will be starting soon when the boat's allowed out. This is a competition between me and my mate Nigel. Uh, we've been fishing together for over 35 years. Nigel's had a boat down the coast for almost 30 years. Uh, we just go out, we've got a GoPro on a boat, and we just have a lot of fun uh, lure fishing for bass and uh, have a competition. We try not to deteriorate into a numbers game this year. We're determined to catch some bigger bass. There's a lot of prize money at stake at the end of the year. The winner will be donating all of his prize money to the charity of his uh, choice. So fingers crossed the best man wins, I, me. Anyway, uh, think about subscribing. Uh, enjoy. Cheers.